thought maybe you weren't interested in my side of the story. But now I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. My attorney told me that the only comment I should make to anybody is no comment. Well, uh, have you got a moment, Eddie? I just told you, Elliot. I got nothing to say. Well, I just left my dad. He told me about what happened under the boarding house. He's pretty upset about it. Yeah, he's a good man. Yeah, I know he is. He asked me if there's anything I could do about it, but of course there isn't, you know. I know. Yeah, I know you know. It's just like a few years ago when I got out of parole, I moved into the same boarding house you're living in with my dad. And you got the bums rest three days later. No, they gave it me in two days. <laughs> Look, Eddie, I'd like to ask you something. I said no interview. Yeah, Look, Eddie. You're no killer. I spent 18 years in the penitentiary with men who were capable of that kind of violence, and you're not one of them. You know what I think? I think that'd make a great front page story right about now. Listen, I think you're a con man, and I think you're a hustler. Now, there's your lead. Once a con, always a con, but never a killer. Ah, come on, Eddie. What happened anyway? <laughs> Well, I got a few tables I had to clear off. But thanks for the vote of confidence, you know. I wish there was some way I could put you on the stand. Is there any way uh, to keep you off? I'll see you later. <laughs> OK, Eddie, I'll see you later. Yep. Oh, by the way, uh, here. My dad said you might need that. Well, you tell your dad. Tell him thanks. Martin, I've been waiting for you. Something very unfortunate has occurred. I've had a serious argument with Weber. He stormed out of the house, threatening all sorts of things. Why don't you call the police? I thought I'd better warn you first. Why me? Well, I'm afraid he misinterpreted something I said, Leslie. He flew into a rage. He may be on his way to the mill right now. I'll call the police. Wait. You forced me to say this, Leslie. I have in my possession a piece of paper. A piece of paper with Eddie Jack's name on it. Signed by you. Something about services to be rendered? Leslie. Yes? Listen, Leslie. I'm prepared to give you everything you want. The mill, cash, stock options, everything. I want you to destroy the murderer of my granddaughter. A retired old man. You've lost all ability to reason. The world isn't spinning in your direction, so you want it stopped, reversed, and spun back your way. Sorry, Martin. Leslie, I'll go to the police with your note. Go ahead. Why were you so insistent on seeing him alone? I uh, didn't exactly have a guilt edged invitation. I was afraid if anybody saw me, they'd kick me out. All right, go on. Well, anyway, like I said, I had my eye on the front door. Finally, it opened, and this dark-haired girl came running out. I didn't get too good a look at her. Had you ever seen her before? I'm not sure. She wasn't very tall, maybe 5'3 or 4. Hi. Hi. Feeling any better? Yes, a little. Think you could identify her if you saw her again? I'm not sure. I, uh, I think so. She was... It was me. 
I know. I was trying to get up the courage to talk to you. I'm sorry I lied to you. You sit down. Now tell me what happened. That afternoon at the house. When we signed the property settlement? Yes. I left. Then suddenly there were doubts all over again. I had to find out about you once and for all. I walked and I walked and I walked. When I realized it was dark, I called Adrian. She didn't want me to come over, but I came over anyway. She made me pay for it. She repeated over and over again how much she wanted you. We started to argue. She walked away from me up the stairs. I followed her. I still hadn't gotten what I'd come for. And then all of a sudden, she admitted to me that she had lied. Nothing had happened between you and Boston. But that afterwards... That afterwards it did happen. That it was my fault because I didn't believe you. She said you were hers now, that you belonged to her. Stephen, it's not what you think. It was an accident. She lost her temper. She came at me as if to hit me. She, she lost her balance. She fell. You didn't strike her or push her. I've got to know. No, I swear I didn't. And that was it? Yes. I panicked, ran out. That's when he saw me. Now you know you'll have to make a statement to the police. I just didn't want them to think that Rita's father had anything to do with it. Only told me before. I'm sorry that you'll be involved. It'll have to come out about you and Adrian. Is that why you think I'm worried? No, I just meant that. Well, I would have kept you out of it if I could have. Now get this straight. If you're responsible for Adrian's death, I'm responsible. No, that's not true, Stephen. If I hadn't have gone to that house, I. And if I hadn't have wanted her. If I could do anything to change what happened, anything at all. I never loved her. It was all revenge. And desire. It was, yes. It was twisted. Full of hate. That's what we had. All we had. You cared enough about us, about you and me, to go to Adrian, to find out what really happened. And you still care about us. Please, Stephen. You know what I think? Maybe out of all this, Betty and I will get back together. When do you want me at the courthouse? There's been a, a change in plans. Mr. Payton asked me to pick you up and drop you off at the inn. He and Mr. Kennerly will be waiting for you there, sir. The inn? He thought it would be a little more convenient. Convenient for whom? I've got everything laid out here. I'm sorry, but that's what he wants. He never changes, does he? Everything has to be done according to his whim. Why couldn't he have told me earlier? Don't ask me. Well, you might as well go on ahead, Lee. I'll drive over myself. Sir, he asked me to bring you. I uh, live at the inn, remember? You only have to bring me back for my car. I have no objections as long as that's what Mr. Payton wants. You obey him without question, don't you? I do as I'm told. You better bundle up. It's getting pretty cold out. How does it happen that you're not in uniform? Because I was going off duty later on.
from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Oh, no. I knew there was something wrong. Rita. Oh, no. Easy now. I can't turn my emotions on and off like a light switch, Elliot. Face them. I'm trying. How are you? Fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, call it a two dollar ticket to win. From Mr. Payton. You see, you were wrong about me all along. Thank you.